Hi and welcome to another episode of Sin City. Now today I promise I'm going to keep the reviews a little bit shorter than last time. I know we, we went to almost the 10 minute limit. 10 minute limit, that, that rhymes. God, I have a sad life. Anyway, I know we almost went to the 10 minute limit that YouTube imposes on their videos, so this time we'll keep it a bit shorter. Um, and I'll fill in the space with a couple of movie trailers, which is always a good thing. Um, so I'm going to limit myself to two reviews. Two, that's right, you heard me, only two. One for a new film that's just come out on DVD, and the other for a film that has been around for a very long time, actually, on DVD, VHS, film. It was done before one of the Beatles died, so it's kind of old, and that's kind of the point, but I'll explain more about that later. First up, Iron Man. Now, most of you would have seen this in the big screen, hopefully, fingers crossed, um, you've gone and bought it on DVD because, to be perfectly honest, I work in a DVD store and it's good when people buy things. Very good. But I'm not going to tell you where I work because I'm not allowed. It's actually against the rules, it's in my contract. Now, Iron Man on DVD is fantastic. On Blu-ray, I am sure, is even better. Um, I had a few issues with it though, and I think these issues stem from the simple fact that I'm not an Iron Man fan. I'm not someone who's grown up on the comics. There's never been an Iron Man movie before for me to have a reference point to, so this really was a brand new project for me. And I'm really excited about that, because it's very rare for me to come across something that I haven't seen before in some shape or form. Of course, I know who Iron Man is. Everybody knows who Iron Man is. Um, now, I must say some of the standout things for me in this, um, Robert Downey Jr. is brilliant. Honestly, brilliant. He was robbed of the Oscar when he went out for Chaplin, and I would like to see this be the first superhero film where he gets an Oscar. I think that would be kind of cool. It would be Robert Downey Jr. versus... No, it wouldn't be Heath Ledger because he'd be supporting actor. But you know what I mean. Well, I think Robert Downey Jr. deserves some sort of accolade for this because he did really well. Um, I think John Favreau as a director has taken some fantastic things um, from the source material and just worked it brilliantly. I love Stan Lee's cameo in this film. It's got to be one of the most fun cameos I've ever seen from the creator of the series. Um, and, and I must admit, I'm really blown away by the work that Stan Winston did on this, which Stan, who is a, a completely brilliant special effects person, visual effects supervisor, this was his last film before he passed away earlier this year. So it was kind of good to see that, that he went out on a high. I mean, it really is a high. So this is what we're going to do. I'm going to show you the trailer. Here's the trailer. Mr. Stark, you've been called the Da Vinci of our time. What do you say to that? Absolutely ridiculous. I don't paint. What do you say to your other nickname, the Merchant of Death? That's not Ben. They say the best weapon is one you never have to fire. I prefer the weapon you only need to fire once. That's how Dad did it. That's how America does it. And it's worked out pretty well so far. To peace. Is it cool if I take a picture with you? Yes, it's very cool. I don't want to see this on your MySpace page. Please, no gang signs. No, throw it up, I'm kidding. You have to tomorrow to assemble my missile. I should be dead already. Unless it was for a reason. I just finally know what I have to do. That doesn't look like a missile. What are you building, Stark? I'm working on something big.
things that let me down a little bit is that the pacing seemed a little bit off. I'm not quite sure why, it just it didn't quite work for me. And I wanted more action. I would expect for this multi-millionaire who's got all the power in the world to build a completely high-tech, up-to-date suit that no one else can replicate, um, to have a bit more action in it. It just felt a little bit light on it. And I know it's a creation story, and they they tend to dip out on the, on the action, but this film could have done with it, I think. Um, other than that, Gwyneth Paltrow, yeah, yeah, okay as Pepper Potts, not brilliant, not great. Paul Bettany as Jarvis, I thought there was a nice little change there actually making Jarvis more of an automated system than a butler that apparently he is in the comic books. Overall though, I thought it was a really well done, solid effort. I'm looking forward to the sequel. Love the ending, not just the I am Iron Man thing. If you haven't sat through and seen the complete ending, there's a nice little bit with Samuel L. Jackson and Sam rocks. Sam does rock. Um, starting the Avengers, or the Avenger Initiative, I think they call it, which is basically the Avengers. It'll make more sense when you sit down and watch it, I'm sure. So that film is going to get a great big four out of five stars. You know, the action thing let it down just a little. Just, just a little. Don't have. Classic. Ooh, an old film star. Of course, this week we're going to be doing Rosemary's Baby. Now, I picked Rosemary's Baby for a couple of reasons. One, we have Halloween coming up. And this is an awesome little horror story. Uh, a lot of people find the pacing a little bit off, a little bit strange, which is kind of understandable. This is Roman Polanski's first American film, and it's kind of creepy. Um, and not just for the fact that the storyline follows per a person who is giving birth to the Antichrist, who is raped by Satan, uh, and the weird people in the house who all seem to be in on it all seem kind of crazy. It, it, it's a nice little psychological horror. If you've read the book and not seen the movie, then I thoroughly recommend you see the movie as well because it follows very, very closely to the book. That's just something that Polanski wanted to do.